let's talk about traffic shaping. To be a successful sender in the current email environment, it's required to be able to control how the MTA sends on a per destination domain basis. Each mailbox provider is going to have different expectations and different needs around how many connections you open, how many messages you send per connection. All of these are so that their systems do not become overwhelmed and so that they're able to successfully process and deliver the messages that you are sending to them to their customers' inboxes. Unfortunately, there's not a, a well-published, easy list of, of what these settings should be, but most large senders have been able to determine over time what settings work best to them. So our goal is to give you a straightforward set of defaults, as well as the ability to introduce your own rules. Now we have two functionalities within Kumo MTA that you are going to choose from when, when using traffic shaping. The first one is our traffic shaping helper. You also, of course, have the ability to simply call, catch the DD Grace path config function and pass back any information you want. You do not have to use the helpers. If you've built a robust database of this information, you could be querying it directly. We're going to assume in this case that you're going to be using the helper files. So looking at the helpers, what we're going to see is that the Lua, the shaping.lua helper is the most common one. The first one we introduced very straightforward to use. We'll show you how to set it up inside of the example config file in a bit. But what you'll see is that it's a require against our policy extra shaping file, as well as a simple answer to the event get egress path config, where we say shaping setup. The first time it's called, it's going to set everything up. The next time it's called, it's just going to go back and retrieve information. What you'll see is that there's a default shaping.lua policy that's available to you. It uses very simple formatting. It's written in TOML. As you can see here, it's done using things like option equals value. So how many connections? What rate of connections? What limit do we have there? How many deliveries are we allowing per connection? What's the maximum rate of messages that we're allowing things to go through? All of this is put into, at first, the default, which is simply to say, for all domains we haven't otherwise configured, we want to use this. One of the things to be aware of is that we do MX rollup. And so this is done natively out of the box. This is to address a common problem that has been introduced in the last few years for senders. And that is that there are a lot of white label mailbox providers these days. So for example, you may send to yahoo.com and yahoo.com has a number of different domains that they, they provide. Ymail, Rocketmail, att.com these days, all of these different domains that are all still Yahoo, but you can't configure each of them individually. Not only do you not know all the domains that belong to Yahoo, but even if you did, if you configure them each separately, but they all represent, they're all actually serviced by one set of MTAs, one MX set, the problem becomes that instead of setting a connection limit of say 10 overall, you've configured it for 10 different domains at Yahoo. So now you're actually going to open up to 100 different connections. That's not ideal. It's going to send too much traffic. The remote servers are going to see that you're not following their rules, and they're going to act accordingly. Instead, what we do is we take all of those different MXs, and we roll them together into what we call a site name. And it's a regex that represents all the MX servers for that particular domain. Instead of setting up each domain individually, what we do is when a new message comes in and the destination domain maps to the same site name as an existing set of messages, we aggregate those together. We queue them together, we deliver them together, and we throttle them together. And that means that we don't have to keep track of what all the domains are for Yahoo. Instead, as you can see here, we're configuring yahoo.com, max deliveries per connection 20, and all of the domains that we encounter that have the same MX fingerprint as yahoo.com are going to have these rules applied to them. This means that we can now just very simply set things up. In addition to that, we're also dealing with things like Google Workspace where, or Microsoft Office 365, where there are thousands of domains hosted by these organizations, all from a single MX set. And again, we don't want to open thousands of copies of the connection limit resulting in 10,000 or more connections. What we really want is just one set of rules that apply to everything you find there. So that's where this comes into play. Occasionally, you'll see here in the foo.com example, you may say, okay, that's great, but I have specific rules in mind for this destination domain, even though it rolls up into another domain. 
And so for that, you can put MX roll up equals false, which is you saying, I know this rolls together with others, but I still want to treat it separately as the destination domain. That allows you to create settings and, and adjust them. You not only have the ability to set up the, you know, to use the shaping.toml that we provide you, you also have the ability to add your own rules. And to do that, you simply add a list of the different rule files that you want to incorporate into your configuration. So we're going to go over how to set that all up in a couple of minutes. From there, let's talk about traffic shaping automation. So traffic shaping automation takes us a step further than simply setting up static rules, which are often useful, and allows us to make the server not only proactive in the rules that we've set for it, but also reactive to the feedback that we're receiving from those mailbox providers. So we may get, for example, a TSO4 from Yahoo, and a TSO4 from Yahoo is saying, hey, you're sending too much right now, I need you to pause your sending, we're not liking what we're seeing so far, come back later. Rather than continuously hitting them after getting that feedback, we use these traffic shaping automation rules to act on that feedback according to what that mailbox provider wants us to do when we're aware of that. And so what you'll see here is that architecturally, there's a separate daemon standalone called the Kumo TSA daemon service dot service that will start automatically when we have configured it. And that daemon is looking for the events that are being recorded by Kumo MTA, and they're making it, it's making adjustments to the predefined rules and feeding those back to the Kumo MTA instances. And this does mean that if you're running multiple Kumo MTA servers, because this is a separate daemon, they can all talk to it simultaneously, which means that this daemon is actually cluster aware. It's able to react to events that occur across the cluster and then publish rules and changes to those servers so that they are in turn able to act on that feedback simultaneously, even if not each of those servers has received the feedback themselves. This is an improvement over other automation systems you might have seen in the past where each individual server is running the rule set. And while that can work in non-shared IP situations, anytime you want to share IP addresses across multiple servers for greater throughput or availability, you need an architecture that is going to support the automation occurring across those nodes and for those rules to be shared across the nodes. That's what our intent was here, is to make this cluster capable. So we're going to have additional configuration that we do here. The first is that there's a TSA underscore init.lua file that controls the daemon. We're going to make changes to init.lua to make sure that Kumo MTA knows that it's working in an automation environment. And our shaping.toml is going to have a new entry in it that allows us to do automated adjustments to our traffic. So first up, you're going to see here, the config for the daemon is quite simple as well. Again, it's built in Lua, and it simply says, hey, we're going to start a listener on 8008. We're trusting right now the local host. We would update this to trust the other nodes in our cluster if we were using a clustered environment. We set a caching system to say, all right, we're going to load up our shaping data. We're going to hold it for up to five minutes. And we're going to then load all the shaping information out of our configuration files. And so there's two places that we're looking. Okay, the first one is Optimo Kuma MTA share policy extras slash shaping.toml. Policy extras slash shaping.toml is where we are maintaining a copy in version control within our repositories of what we consider our default traffic shaping rules for our users that is community maintained and community updated. This is for everyone to get started with. The rules in here are going to be relatively conservative because we want to make sure that our servers are well behaved out of the box. Those who wish to then throttle up and increase the settings are free to do so in their own rule set. And that's commonly kept at opt Kumo MTA Etsy policy and then shaping.toml. You can also use JSON files. So all of the things that we're showing you here can also be done in JSON format if you prefer that for automated updating because you're feeding off of like a local database. Toggle, of course, is more suited to manual editing. So from here, you're going to see that, and by the way, like the warning says, don't edit this one in policy extras because it will be overwritten if you do any updates from the repository. So keep it in your own local file. Changes to init.lua, these are, by the way, already in the example configuration, in the example server policy, but you're going to see that it says we're going to require policy extra shaping again, but this time we're saying local shaper is shaping setup of automation. So where do we publish to? Where do we subscribe from? Where are those extra files that we want the server to be able to use? Okay, That's 
setting up the communication. Now, the last thing we do is we're going to have a, a function in Kumo init that says set up publish. So the first time the server loads, we're gonna tell it get ready to publish and subscribe to that daemon. And then on our get egress path config, rather than shaper setup, we're just gonna put shaper get egress path config. So now we're saying, look, just go grab the information and put it in there. With the shaping.toml, and you'll see that in the examples, instead of uh, just having the static rules, or I should say, in addition to having the static rules, you have the dot automation. And in the dot automation, you can create a regex for what rule you're looking to respond to, what action to take, and for how long. One of the most common things to do here is a suspend, because you're simply saying, hey, if I get a TSO4, for example, Yahoo would like us to go away for two hours and then come back. That's where we put in the rule here. The other option we have is to say, okay, we can do an, a set config. So we can say, I want to change the max connection rate to 100 per second, right? So when we get this response, the boot in this case, we're going to say 100 per second is our new max connection rate. In addition to that, we can set a trigger. So we're saying, I don't just want to do this every time I see it. I want to do this if I see it more than twice in an hour. And this can also be per minute, per second, per day. And again, we can set a duration. So this is allowing us to not suspend, but to slow down for a period of time. Okay. With that, we can monitor our daemon. So as you can see here, we can make an HTTP request in. Uh, we do our custom file. And we can just do a curl against that saying, hey, get me the config, show me what the current shaping is. It's going to come back to us and say, these are the current shaping rules in the same format as shaping.toml. In this case, it's empty. We don't have anything in there. All right, so that's the kumo-tsa-daemon service. So we can use systemctl to start and stop it. Any other, like any other daemon, it's just going to follow the same reach our rules every 20 minutes, exponential fallback. All right. So that gives you a, an example of what's, what's happening with traffic shipping automation. Now, show you a couple more things here as we go. All right, we're going to look at the tutorial and we're going to identify how we change and set up as part of the tutorial flow to get this going. But the other thing I wanted to show you is that this is what is in policy extras. It's very easy to get to. You go to our repository, assets policy extra shaping.toml. You'll get a nice little introduction, some explanation up top how to get it and implement it into your server. But below that, you're going to see that it's, again, default are the basic rules that we give you in order to keep the server conservative and doing what we want it to do. After that, we try to document where we're getting information from. So the Gmail rules, 50 deliveries per connection, five connection limit, TLS is required because we know that Google has TLS available for all their traffic. And we say that if we get five connection failures in a row, we're going to defer that message for retry. Yahoo, we know that they'd like to have 20, connect, 20 deliveries per connection, I should say. We also know that if you see a 2ESO4, they'd like you to suspend for two hours. So we're putting those rules in there by default. In addition to that, we have Comcast rules. Again, retrieved from Comcast's website in this case, 10 connection limit, 250 messages per connection. Again, we're going to require TLS because we know that they support it for all their messages an idle timeout of 30 seconds, and we're going to try up to 24 different connection attempts before delaying the message. Mail.com, we know that they like 100 deliveries per connection, and we know that orange.fr doesn't want more than three connections. So those are the examples that you have in order to see how this works. These rules, unless you change them, will apply out of the box in your policy. Last thing we're going to show you really quick is that if you look at the example config, we're just going to go here to user guide. We're going to go to configuration and we're going to go to example server policy. You'll see that within that policy, we do have this already set up and we are setting it up for automation. So you'll note here that we have traffic shaping being configured based on publish, subscribe, extra files, all in the default places. Once we go into the init, we're going to see within the init that we have that reference for setting up our, our shaper. Just allow me to find it really quick. Shaper set up publish. And then outside of the init event, we also have our event catch handler for get egress path config, which says shaper get egress path config. Now, let's go back to the tutorial that we've been working our way through in some of these videos. And you'll see we've gotten to the section on configuring Kumo MTA. We've previously covered how to move the example config into place. 
pretty self-explanatory on how to set up your relay hosts and your HTTP listener. So let's go to this little part of the instruction here. You're going to see that we want to take the file that is provided to us. We want to make a local copy of it. So this is pretty straightforward. We're going to go here, a copy. Also note there's a handy copy button there that will copy it to the clipboard. All right within here, what we see is I'm currently in Optimo Etsy policy. Add that rule there. What that does is it introduces the shaping.toml file. Now, that file is the exact same file that is being used as our defaults that we're providing you from the community. The goal is that if you want to be able to override this, all you have to do, because this is included second in the list, is make changes here. And these changes will be permanent. In addition, anything you add here will be part of a permanent set of rules that you're able to use. By avoiding the file in policy extras and avoiding making any changes to that file, you can be assured that your rule changes and your rule additions will be maintained after any kind of updates that you do using our repository. Okay. The other thing that you're going to see in here is that TSA in it. And you'll notice that again, very straightforward. It's going to start that thing up. It's going to put it on port 8008. By default, it's going to allow the local hosts to connect, which is going to allow this particular instance of Kumo MTA to talk to the, to the TSA agent. If you're running in a cluster, this is where you would add additional hosts or additional networks to allow that to happen. We have our data caching set to five minutes and we have our data shaping loading going on. One thing to note in here is right here, we have a commented out field that says, Optical MTA Etsy policy shaping.tom. We need to remove the comment and write that. The reason why is because we now have that file in place. We do want the TSA daemon to use that configuration as well as the policy extra configuration. This will make that take effect. That concludes what we're doing for today. We'll continue on, show you more in an additional video on how to configure the other helpers and eventually start the server up, to make sure everything's running correctly. Again, if you have any questions, please join our Discord. The link will be in the description of this video, but it's kumomta.com forward slash Discord. We have an active community where we answer questions and give advice. Thank you for watching.